Welcome everyone. This is our artist talk with our special guest, Tara Nicole Hurst. And, and just kind of read what you've sent me as a brief bio so people can you know what it is, you know, what your background is, etc. I am a 40 year old survivor of domestic violence. I lost two kids due to the violence. I have two surviving kids. I am a single mom who had a stroke eight years ago, and now I struggle every day. Because of the stroke, I can't work. Because I lost two kids mentally, it's been hard. The only thing that saves me is painting. Sometimes I paint on cardboard. I, almost, I am almost out of paint. I'm tired, but will never give up. I don't know how, through art, I am able to love myself again and face my trauma. I need this. Yeah. So I thought that was very well said, very well written. Um, and just to move on to your statement, you as an artist say, I want to show people that no matter what you have been through, that as long as you are breathing, there is a chance. I was in a coma after my stroke. I couldn't walk or talk for over a year. My daughter died. I have found peace of mind through art and hard work. So, yes. bravo, bravo. So, Nicole, I'm going to I'm going to ask you just to talk a little bit about that whole idea of art being sort of your saving grace that it has helped you to cope with all the traumas that you've been through including loss of your children loss of your ability to walk and talk for a year i mean you've been through a lot you've been through a lot so please tell us how it is that what well, you know that the art came in for you was it were you painting before all of that or this well, um, oh. the art helped me to remember that I used to paint I oh. mean when I started I started about two years ago and I started when I started painting I would cry a lot and I would think about things that happened so it released a lot of that stuff that I held back that I held in and um, so I started painting again and I started hearing my grandmother teaching me and she used to teach me, you know, she used to give me these hints like if the sun is coming from that way, where would it hit on the person or, you know, how would the shadow look or, you know, you have to visualize it and she gave me all these hints and I didn't remember painting with her mm -hmm. until I started painting again and I started like releasing all of the negativity and the the stuff that I've been holding back, I, um, and it helps me to release pain. It helps me to release release pain, and it, yeah, it helps me to be able to talk about it. Wow. Well, I I really appreciate that you are willing to share your story and to talk about this with the public. Um, and I want to go into your your show, and as we do the interview. You know, we'll be going through your solo exhibition in the virtual gallery. Okay. Um, so let me let me um, share my screen okay. so that it's uh, I'm better at writing than I am talking. So well, you're doing fine. <laughs> you're doing fine. Okay, I'm not sure if my screen is being shared. It doesn't look like yeah, I see it. I see you it. can see it. Okay, great, great. Let me just make this. Um, okay, great. So I'm going to enter. Oh, I should have gone back and read what was the introduction to the gallery. So this is a solo star gallery. And the name of the show is Me Still Going. Yeah. Right. And okay, this is what this was my introduction to your exhibit. 
Art brut is French term that translate as raw art, invented by the French artist Jean Dubuffet to describe art such as graffiti or naive art, which is made outside the academic tradition of fine art. Me still going epitomizes this term. Hers, the self-trained artist, has taken her raw, brutal pain and transfigures it into mesmerizing works of art that depict, depict the honest truth of her life, a truth that many women share, and men as well, the pain of domestic violence. So we're going to go inside, and we're going to... We're going to have to deal with it. <laughs> Yeah. Let me go from this side from the beginning. And I'm just going to ask you about the pieces. And you could just briefly, I'm going to cut out that. Just briefly talk about this one. It says meeting me. Yeah, it's the darkness. It's, the, it's all of my trauma and pain and all of the things that held me back. Meeting my higher self or a, a, a cleaner self, a, a lighter self, uh, uh, healed me, I guess. And, and I didn't, I didn't know that I was good. I thought that I was bad. I thought that there was something wrong. There was a reason I went through so much and it was, there's a reason so that I can talk about it because I'm strong. And now I know that through art, I know I'm strong and I know I'm the lighter one. I know I'm, 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 I'm going to be the most highest me I can before I leave this earth. Right. So this me meeting my soul or my spirit, my higher self. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. That's a great attitude, Tara. Very great attitude. And this one, hiding. It looks like well, hiding. It's, it's a really hard one to talk about. As my husband had beat me that night. And it's a really hard one to talk about. And I hid behind a tree all night. I had gas. He poured gas on me. He tried to light me on fire, but he couldn't find a lighter. And I hid behind a tree all night with gas in my eyes and mouth and nose. And I heard him looking for me, but I didn't make a sound. Wow. I was terrified. Wow. And that one I cried about a lot. I don't look like much. And that's like one of my first ones. I just let it out and it, it just came and then I cried so much with that one. Wow. Yeah. That's that's something. Good hard for me to look at sometimes too. Good heavens. But talking about it like this helps me to be able to talk about it to people who need it. Sure, sure. Yeah. Sure. I'm I'm like astounded that yes you were able to step back enough and even produce this piece yeah. you know my goodness so the that the, the blouse that you're wearing the red and black does that signify the fire that never hit you i don't know i'm not really sure it's just stuff what i painted okay okay i don't i don't I don't really know what I'm painting until after it's done, and then I, I think, then it, then it hits me all of a sudden, you know, okay. the message behind it. But I really don't know why the black and red shirt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm well, just trying to show that that's what I wear. I wear t-shirts a lot. I wear, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't dress nice. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's, it's great that you're in the forefront and you're the one who's really present in the painting mm -hmm. and the other figure representing your husband at the time is at least faint. So that makes it even more palpable that, that he was there but in an essence he wasn't there for you and you were there for yourself you know yeah and i don't want to i don't want to put him in the forefront of anything i don't right right sure sure yeah. i'm sure being able to create the pieces helped to to sort of strengthen your resolve as well because you're validating what your reality is for yourself and that you are strong and that you can practice that 
I'm not mad at him no more. He's he's broken and he needs to be healed too so that he can face what he did every day. He's not gonna face it. Wow. Is is he in jail? No. Okay. No. no. And I, I don't I, I just want him to be able to face what he's done. You know, the he don't even know. He don't even I don't think he knows what he did. I don't think he cares. Wow, wow. This this piece is very, very intriguing, this one your third eye there and the detail that you put, like even the dots and the, the hair. Talk about higher me. She, she started out looking kind of nerdy maybe, I don't know. And then she just turned fabulous. And I was like, wow. And she's looking, she was looking straight at me the whole time. Like, you know, I'm fabulous. And, and she just turned into something amazing. Wow. And at first I didn't like what she looked like, but then she just kept growing into beauty and, 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 and confidence. And I love her. Wow. It shows. It definitely shows. Yeah. And this one pain. Yeah, it's a lot. It's another one that I, I cried a lot about and I released a lot of a lot of pain with. Mm -hmm. He he constantly tore me down. Mm -hmm. And I guess I just I wasn't present. I was just I was he was calling me all he used to call me all kind of really bad names and he would tell me he was gonna kill me all the time. Mm -hmm. And I would think, Go ahead, I'm already dead. Right. I've lost a daughter. This is not even, you know, it's not, this is not how anybody should live. And at the time I was, I wanted to die. Mm. I felt worthless. Wow. How did you, Tara, how did you resist that desire to die? To die, Cause, you know, many people commit suicide and you no know, after after I started painting and started crying and started taking care of myself a little bit and started to love myself a little bit and talking to people and helping people get through their own thing and realizing that I am way more I am amazing and, and you know it snowballed into self-love and I can't you know I love me I okay. love me now and now I want to live there's a reason I'm here good good I want to live yeah. and I want to experience life and I want to see the details and everything of flower up or whatever, you know, I want to, I want to feel it. I want to, I want to experience every second of life mm -hmm. Even now, that's okay, because that's what we're supposed to experience it. We're supposed to learn from it. Right. Now I remember that you said that you did have a goal in life that you wanted to be able to help others can you talk about that goal that you have can you share that goal with us yeah i want to be able to help people who are mentally ill or people who have been broken to realize that there is so much more to realize that they are here for a reason and to realize that they they could love life they can love life again they they absolutely can but you have to stop killing yourself first i mean you have to stop the smoking the drinking whatever the whatever you know, that you're doing to self-destruct, stop. You have to stop that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to be strong. You have to have willpower. And and you can get through it. I mean, I should not be here. I shouldn't be here in so many different ways. I should not be here. But once you start to love life and you start to smell a flower, you start to build those little happy, happy seconds, they turn into a mood. A good mood or a bad mood. You can either make your good mood or you can make your bad mood. You can either make a bad mood with all the bad things that you let in your mind. You can go outside and smell, smell a flower and take a walk or paint and make good mood. Um, it's possible. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's willpower. You have to have it. <laughs> yeah. wow. Well, what's the best piece of advice you've been given? Um. It's not, I, it wasn't given to me, but it was given to everybody in a song, or, you know, and it's choose for yourself and question authority. You I'm know, sorry, say that one more time, a little slower. Okay, think for yourself and question authority. 
Ah, okay. You don't have to give in to what people say. I was told that I was never going to walk again or talk or do nothing. They told my family that I wasn't going to wake up from my coma. You know, I proved them wrong five days later. I woke up and told my brother to shut up. I, I went, shh. And he said, did you just tell me to shut up? And I did it again. I said, shh. And he said, oh, my God, you did. And then, <laughs> and I'm, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm running some. I mean, I'm, I'm running, I'm singing, I'm dancing. And you don't have to listen to the final say. Don't do it. Keep going and keep living and keep trying and keep pushing. You have to push yourself. It's work. Wow. Wow. Excellent. 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 Now, I know you have many different versions of this piece, but I, I chose this one as it's really, it's really cool. I love the pink, especially. Yes. Uh, it seems to be the opposite color that one would have with a skull, you know, but I love it. So talk about Me Still Going, the, the name after this, this exhibition, Me Still Going. I don't know if you can see it, but the soul, the blue underneath her neck, uh -huh. the soul. Oh, she's wearing the helmet, and she's still going. The helmet is the skull, and I'm still, I'm still going, and I'm starting to have my helmet on, and I'm, I'm still going, and I'm looking fabulous doing it, as fabulous as a skull can. Right. I'm <laughs> and I'm still going. Wow. Yeah. And and what are the what are the um these like little red? I don't know. I, I'll call them little flowers at the I top. Think you know, I, anything I paint, it's not based off of reality. It's all of my imagination. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And people will ask me, you know, that's not where a nose is supposed to go, or that's not where the hand, whatever, you know, but I'm like, it's blue. It may be an alien. How do you know what it's supposed to look like? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I just, I just, I free myself. I just let myself paint whatever comes out. And it's not, it's a flower, but I'm not sure what kind or where. Right. Right. Well, what well as, as an artist, you have creative license, as they say, yeah. you know. Well, that's why I love being free. That's why I love art. I, it frees me. Good, good, yeah. good. This one that says, shh, was this one you told your brother, shh? <laughs> no, no, this one is. All the people who all, all the people who told me to shut up over my life. Ah. Keep my mouth closed to not have a say, to not. I was so held back. I was so controlled. And I felt like I'm, I should have had like something closed in my mouth. I felt like, you know, sometimes if I did open my mouth, I said something horribly wrong or, you know, people wasn't going to like it or. And now I'm not going to ever shut up again. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Because I know I got some kind of smarts in here. <laughs> <laughs> and this one is Demon Angel. Yeah. However you want to look at it. You know, we are all, we all have bad in us and we all have good in us. And kind of like that as above so below you know mm -hmm. it's like the darkness and the trauma made me who i am and now it's turned into good mm -hmm. so it's just like you know everybody can be bad and everybody can be good and we have it both we have both of those in us but i went through excuse the term i went through absolute hell yeah to, to find now that I'm good. I'm a good person. And I'm that same person. Mm -hmm. And to not hate my bad part, to not to not push away that, to, to, to look at it, examine it, and learn from it. Mm -hmm. To bring beauty out of it. talking about beauty <laughs> bluebird talk about bluebird 
that was just me trying to be normal, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, stop painting skulls and people hurting and just paint something kind of, you know, mellow and cool. And that's what I did. Uh huh. And, and how did that affect you? Um, cause, cause in a way your other paintings, like you said, they're more on the dark side, yeah. but they were therapeutic for you, for you to, yeah. you know, confront and get, get it out there. Mm -hmm. So now this is a different aesthetic, a different color, um, a different figure, right? This beautiful yeah. blue bird and this looks like water ripples and, you know, happiness. So how did this affect you as you were painting it? It was just relaxing. It was, it was calming, and it turned into a calm-looking bird thing. And I don't know if it's actually a bird, and I don't know if the beak is right or the because you can't tell what kind of bird it is. Yeah. <laughs> right. Bird. It just it just came out, and it was calming. Okay. And, you know, I didn't have to think about nothing bad. It's right. Right. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. And and again, you know. You're, you're expressing your visions, your feelings, your yourself, you know, in your artwork and, and, and it, doesn't, it doesn't all have to be, it doesn't all have to be dark. Right. It doesn't all have to be, you know, I can paint happy. <laughs> right. I can. So, yeah. Right. So, so there is a balance, right? Yeah. It always has to be. Right. So this one, this one is self-explanatory in that you you have the title, it doesn't stop. You know, the tears don't stop. And 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 neither do they. They don't change unless they want to change. Yeah. They're not you can't fix them. And you can't stay in because all you're doing is not loving yourself, you're destroying yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And don't stop, it won't stop. Mm -hmm not unless they're ready to face what they've done and, and learn from it and heal from it. Right. And it's just another, another, it was, it was another day. It was just another day. Right. For me. So the it and the it doesn't stop. The pain. The pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, it can. Yeah. I just, it, that was a bad time. I was I was probably going through something. I have these episodes where sometimes I do, I just I have to bring myself out of it though. Right. You know, I have I get really depressed and I have to I have to make I have to force myself to get up and go walk or get up and do something that makes me happy or you know. Right. Right. And sometimes it all just comes back, but I have to deal with it again. And I'm 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 used to dealing with it, and I'm comfortable there now. I'm getting comfortable there now, so I can talk about it. Okay. Again, thank you, Tara, for talking about it. Yeah. You're welcome. I hope it helps somebody. Yeah. Well, we're going to, what, what I wanted to do was um, invite other artists, you know, for maybe we can do another, another talk, you know, um, and, but I didn't want to sort of spring everybody on you. Yeah. Um, because you will get like a ton of questions and you know comments and stuff and I just wanted to sort of ease in yeah. to your presentation so you can feel strong doing it this way and then maybe you know next week right we can we can invite other artists okay um, would you like that <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay I'm, yeah I'm kind of an agoraphobic so this is awesome. I don't have to like actually be there. <laughs> right, right. Okay. Okay. So this is this is called stepping through my shadow. Yeah. I love I love how you title your works. I really do. So to talk well, this, about this one. Stepping through my shadow is a lyric in a song. I hope I don't get in trouble. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's a it's a song about in order to get to the light, you have to face your darkness. Mm -hmm. Everybody back there is all dark. She's the only one that's got light because she's, she's faced it all. And she's about to ascend or she's about to get out of it. She's about to, to be enlightened. She's, she's faced it. Mm -hmm. 
right. It's, it's, and what is, what is the 46? You have the 46 plus two. It's 46 and two. Yes. It's another thing he says in the song is 46 and two is just ahead of me. Okay. I, I've heard different explanations about what it, what it is. I know that it's about facing your past and your trauma to get to the light. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure exactly what 46 and 2 means to him or to anybody. <laughs> I don't know. But I kind of maybe wanted him to see it maybe one day and be like, oh, somebody's listening. Right, right. Well, um, well, do you listen to music a lot when you're painting or is that a part of your therapy? Yes, I have to. I, have, I dance. I stand up and paint. Wow. And I dance and I sing. Yeah, a lot of Led Zeppelin and Tool. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of kind of hard stuff. So, so this one is entitled Stroke. Now you have, it is, is the figure on the, on the left, is that your husband? No. No. It's me. It is you. So both, both of you, both, you're, you're representing yourself twice in this painting. Yeah. Okay. Because when I had the stroke, I had to, it was mind over matter. For eight hours, I was walking to the march of the beat of the throbbing of my head. And I thought it was making it a little better. And I kind of had to like mind over matter and like kind of meditate and kind of like keep strong and keep focused and like kind of help the pain go away mentally. Uh-huh. When I got to the hospital for the fourth time, she said that we're not going to see you anymore because you've been here four times and we've already gave you medicine. I'm like, this is not a migraine and I'm dying and I'm not going to leave. I know I'm not, I'm not, I don't look like I'm dying. I'm not crying. I'm walking. I'm, I'm breathing right, you know, but it's because I'm making it happen. I'm focused and I have to see the doctor. I'm going to die if you don't. And then I found the nurse and I was like, I got to lay down. And she found a bed, and she's like, okay, lay down right here. And I made my, I heard something just say, go to sleep. It's going to be okay. And so I held my eyes closed because it was hurting so bad I couldn't keep them closed. So I held my eyes closed, and I took a big, big deep breath, and then I, I was gone. Just like that, gone. And I don't remember anything else for five days. For five days you were out? Yeah, I was in a coma. Wow. And the other me, the one screaming is the, what I wanted to do. It's how it felt. But the calm one was how I was. The calm one was the strength that I have, the, the mind over matter part. But I wanted to scream and I wanted to cry. It hurt. It felt like people were hitting me in the head with hammers. Wow. wow. And I had blood, my blood, the blood in my head was late fate. My brother came in and I was already out and he said, give her another CAT scan or whatever because she, she's not resting. She's in there jerking and stuff. They said that, that I was in there resting because they gave me so much pain medicine. And he said, she's in there jerking around and moving and she's not resting. And so they gave me another CAT scan or whatever and my head was full of blood. Wow. It's a good thing your brother was there. Yeah, it is. And he woke me up out of the coma, too. He annoyed me out of a coma. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Is annoying, the most annoying brother in the world. But I sure you love him. <laughs> yes, I do. He annoyed me right out of a coma. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's his purpose in life. <laughs> At least one of them. <laughs> is he an older brother or a younger brother? Yeah, he's older. Okay. He's a Scorpio and I'm an Aries, so it was always like a power struggle with us. Right, right. Well, yeah, water and fire. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, My, goodness. My goodness. So, so now I, I just have one more question. You said that you were you were in a coma for five days. Mm -hmm. Now, is is this was a stroke when you were awake and then you went into the coma? Yeah. And my head was bleeding all day for those eight hours that I was marching to the throbbing of the my head. Uh-huh. 
it was all day. My head, my head was bleeding internally. Oh Lord. And I didn't know it. I just thought that the, the, the headache wasn't getting better. It just kept growing and growing and growing. And so I was like every throb, my head was ticking. I couldn't, it was horrible. It was the most horrible thing I've ever experienced. It was like the death of my child in my head and pain and physical pain. Wow. It was horrible. For eight hours. Good Lord. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And if I'm not, I'm, I'm a very stubborn person. I'm very strong. If I wasn't who I am, I wouldn't have made it. Right. Thank God. Thank God. Mm -hmm. ah, now to something lighter, right? Protected. Yeah. Protected. Yeah. So was so the music was one one aspect of your protection, right? Is yeah. the music? Yes. Yeah. Chakras. I mean, you can't see me pointing, but the chakras. Learning how to open my chakras and meditate and open my third eye. Yes. And I don't know if you can see it, but I've talked about medical marijuana. It's been a big part in my recovery. Okay. All, all of it, the mentally, physically, everything. Mm -hmm. There's a little marijuana leaf, yeah. and you know, in the protection, the blanket, and and then my favorite song by Tool, it's the the guitarist notes. Okay, okay. Wow. Yeah, I'm protected. I feel I'm strong. Good, good. Universe's daughter. Yeah. I am. Um, I didn't have a mom and dad really. I had a grandma. Okay. But everything that I know, I've been forced to learn. And I think it's from the universe. I think something has something has made me learn all of this because I am stubborn. The universe, God, whatever you want to call it, you know, I think has been pushing me. And I feel like there's a purpose that, yeah, I okay. feel like I'm the universe's daughter. I'm alone. I'm, I'm, and, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. It's good. I like it a lot. <laughs> but um, what I learn is from me and from, from me. I'm, and from the, I don't know where I get it from, but it comes. <laughs> now, the, usually, you think of artists and this sometimes a very lonely existence and you just talked about that you're alone. Yeah. Do you think that's, that's, I mean, how do you manage that? How do you manage that for yourself? The art, the art and dancing and, and loving life and smelling the flowers and listening to music and, you know, being able to be free and being able to be who I am. Mm -hmm. without anybody saying why do you do that or why do you do that or trying to break you down mm -hmm. I don't need it I don't want it and the first time anybody says anything to try to break me down I notice it right off right and I'm not going to put up with it no more ever again and I'm good. you know if I'm alone forever so be it I'm good right because you know you're not really alone you have the whole universe around you yeah. right yeah. yeah that's right yeah I, I got I, I'm I, like I said, I'm protected. I've got, I got the spirit. I got the spirit. There ain't no doubt about that. I got the <laughs> Cool, cool. Peace. I love it. I love it. And how we have here torture. Yeah. Now, I, I started out talking about how so many women have domestic violence but it's true across across women and men yeah so talk about talk about this piece this is supposed to be vincent van gogh and he was an aries like me okay and he was a little crazy like me a little bit i mean he cut off his own ear and told a hooker to keep it safe for him <laughs> you know he was a little out there <laughs> And he, he, he died thinking that his art wasn't good enough. 
he died thinking that he wasn't going to be a great artist, and he is, and you just don't know it. Right. And he was a he was a torture. His mind was tortured. He was he. It's that mental illness that um he was great. He just didn't know it, and he was he just let himself think that he was not good enough. Mm-hmm. And he was an he's an inspiration. Oh. I'm a Nikola Tesla. I love Nikola Tesla too because he was a brilliant scientist and he died alone with a pigeon. Who, who was that? Who was that person you just mentioned? I didn't hear Nikola, you. Nikola Tesla. Ah, Tesla. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He, he's like one of my favorite. Yeah. People. He he was a genius. And yes. people thought he was crazy. Yeah. yeah. And. And we have this one awake. Mm-hmm. It's not being able to sleep from all of the things in your head, all of the, you know, sometimes you can't go to sleep because too many thoughts are pouring in or, you know, you've got too much on your mind or, you know, you, you're you you're dealing with a lot and you can't sleep and you're always thinking about things and your imagination is going and you're supposed to be doing something better and you just, I, I couldn't I couldn't sleep for so long mm-hmm. and yeah it was I was I was plagued almost right. spiritual awakening I think mm-hmm. so uh, are these two figures to the left of you here I I know one of them is a woman what is the one on the left is it a bird a yellow bird no, it's a girl. It's a, it's her hair. It's a it's a little girl's hair. Okay, okay. Yeah, she's facing outward. I think it's me and my daughter that passed away. Okay. Um, and that keeps you up. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Kind of trouble. Protector. Talk about this one. I think it's just another one of my higher selves. And I've seen it on the moon. And it's just, it's just connecting me. You know, I, there is no way I should have got through all the things I went through. There is no way. There is something looking out for me. Wow. Yeah. I think that was probably better. Got the universe in her. She got stars in her and a planet. Yeah, I saw. I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Very universal. You have that going through your pieces in the universe. I love space. <laughs> I could feel it because it gives you the freedom that you desire, right? There's no. There's nothing holding you back in space. People can't say, that's not right. How do you know? Have you been there? <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we are made up of the stuff of the stars, you know, yes. so we have been there. We're part of it. <laughs> so yeah, talk, t- talk about terrifying. I think that I can't, I would love to have like a, what do you call it? A supernatural experience. Yeah. But if I did, I would be terrified. I'd be like, oh, no, I didn't, I shouldn't have, I probably shouldn't have wanted this. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, if you saw that in the window, I'd be terrified. I mean, there's supposed to be a window, and he's behind the window. If you looked out the window and saw that, I think anybody would be terrified. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. But he, he kind of. He he represents like a, a, a celestial being or or somebody who's um extraterrestrial. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's, yeah, I love to draw. I love to paint weird things. Sometimes they don't have a meaning. Sometimes they're just freedom. Right, right. Because that's your imagination. Right? Yeah, I have a huge imagination. Oh my that's, god. That's great. Yeah. All right, let's see the third eye here.
what are, what is the writing over here? I can't see it so little. I don't think there's a writing. It's, oh, that one. Okay. It says, it's right up here. It says the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, if the, if I can't see it. Therefore, there, the eye be single. I can't see the rest of yeah, it. Yeah, therefore, if the eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. Okay. It's, it was Jesus talking about the third eye in the Bible. He mentions the third eye three times in the Bible. Ah. Yeah. I actually, I actually read somewhere where they, they don't, they don't put it in any of the books of the Bible, but at the Vatican, there's like these, these, um, accounts of Jesus's travels and in fact he did study in India before yeah. he came back you know so a lot of what he was teaching was also from from the the, I, I, the teachers the yeah. yeah yeah so I mean every the I think if a teacher has something that you can use and and you could help you improve your life you know what the hell use it right <laughs> it. You know? it's it's yeah. when they get it's when they talk about oh you can only study one and you know first of all god is bigger than yeah. jealousy you know i i don't know i think somebody put that in there you know? You're not here to there's, no of it. there's no jealousy that's a human that's a human emotion you know <laughs> yeah we are not on this earth to suffer and anything that can help us to be our better selves, do it. Learn from it. Right. You know, and but it, it is good to respect the teachers. You yeah. know, respect the teachers. Yeah. Honor them, that their wisdom, that they at least did the, the, the research or whatever it is, the studies or the meditations or whatever it is. Study anything. I just, well, I just went through hell. I took a long way around. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got out, you know, but I came out a better person. So I don't think God is mad at me. Right. He's I, I think. I think we went through your entire exhibit. Awesome. Yeah, I think we did. We sure did. So, so let me ask you a few more questions here. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing the screen now because we pretty much, let's see if I could get both of us on here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on here. Okay. I'm, little, huh, I'm okay. glad. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so we, we figured out why art, that was one of the questions I have, but, but you've told us it's, it's your saving grace. It's something that helped you through and, and continues to help you to cope with what has happened and to help you really find that strength in yourself and love, really. Love, number yeah. one, you gotta love yourself before anything you have to, and you can't be your best for anybody else. So, so let me ask you now more like an artistic question. Okay. Okay. What, what do you think the role of the artist is in society? What do you think the artist's role is? Teachers. Because we, you know, we, we know a lot that people aren't listening to. We, 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 we inspire, we, we, Art is in music and movies, and there's there's so much meaning that people don't even see because they can't see it. Yeah, we see, yeah. and people, you know, they they, they I guess non-creative people just don't see things how we see it, and we're mm -hmm. we're trying to show them a new way. We're trying to show them something other than what they, you know, a little bit more. We're trying to. We're just trying to teach. We're trying to make the world better. That's what all artists want. We want it better. We want everybody to love each other. We want everybody to live. And we want everybody to experience life. Yes. Yeah. So what's your what's your most favorable, favorite inspirational place? Place? 
Yeah, your, your most, oh, on earth, your most favorite place. Because <laughs> I know your favorite place already is out in the celestial being. I, I, I understand that 100%. But just putting it on earth, where would that be? Any untouched nature. Oh. I, I want to see the Aurora Borealis so bad. Wow. And I love to be in nature where no humans go. I like to go in the woods. I like to walk in the woods and I like to see places that other people are scared to go through to get to. You know, you got to get through briars and all this to get to a beautiful place. I love doing that. I love finding new places that nobody's ever seen. I, I love I love I love nature. I love being outside. Okay. Okay. So you love to explore. <laughs> Uh, so you love to explore. I love to explore, yes. So professionally, what is your goal? To sell some paint. <laughs> you know, to be able to take care of myself. Okay. I don't think that I can work again. Because, first of all, I've had, I've had a stroke. I can't do physical labor. And also, I just can't put up with somebody trying to belittle me. Mm hmm I can't be around people. You know, I need to find a way. I want to take care of myself. I want to be able to take care of myself and then be able to help other people, you know, learn that they can take care of themselves too. They can do it. They can, they're, they're you know, there's no reason to stop. Mm -hmm. You got to keep playing. You got to keep laughing. And you got to keep living. You can't just give up. Right. So it sounds to me your dream project would be making that happen. Yeah, I want to be able to reach out to people. I've already got like, I'm not bragging. I've got 5,000 Facebook friends, but I, it's all, they're all, they've all been through a lot. Right. And I, my goal was to learn how to talk to anybody. And through talking to all of them, I've learned me. Nice. I myself, you know, and, I, and I'm able to talk to them and I'm able to laugh with them. I'm able to get people, people tell me all the time, I can't, I have to. I, you you bring me through the day. You you like you make me laugh, and I I'm a comedian. I love to make people laugh. Good, good. Yeah. good. So I just I just want to give people hope. You know, that's, I've been that's through a lot. Beautiful. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful mission. That's a Thank beautiful you. dream project. And I wish you all the best. I know you're gonna make that happen. I'm and gonna not, never give up. Yeah, and that's right. Never give up. And so is there anything you'd like to say to, to end off our interview? Just love yourself so you can love other people and be compassionate. Yeah. People need compassion. Yeah. People so need compassion today. I mean, you see people on the corner sitting down, you know, begging for money. At least say, hey. I mean, they're, they're people. We're people. We're all people. We're all in this together. Right. Compassion. That's it. Thank you, Tara. Thank you, Tara. So uh, again, we'll see you again, and thank you for sharing your artwork with us. Um, it, it's you've been on a rough road, and you're still on your path. But like you said, you're stubborn. You're I am. You're, you're strong. You're not going to give up. You've come through hell and high water, right? Yeah. So so. We really wish you all the best, and and if there's anything that we can do to continue your your upliftment, let us know. Okay, thank all you. Right. You're welcome, Tara Nicole Hurst Martinez. <laughs> right. Bye.